Hello and good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's special program, The Trials of Spring, a multimedia initiative. My name is Andrea Hawley. I'm here from the Human Rights Watch Film Festival and I just want to start by thanking you all for coming and welcoming you to tonight's discussion. Um, I also just want to quickly thank everyone here at the IFC Center. Um, I have a feeling a few of you have been to the IFC Center in the past week. So I just want to thank them for all their help in producing the festival. Uh, we certainly could not do it without them. I also just want to quickly thank our presenting partners on tonight's screening the New York Women's Foundation. You might have heard about this program from them. So I just want to thank them for their help in spreading the word about the program. Um, I'm just going to say a couple things very quickly about the festival and then I'll sort of go into what we're going to do tonight and bring up some individuals who are, as I keep saying, much more interesting than I am to share a little bit about tonight's program as well. Um, at this point, if you haven't picked up one of our brochures, um, please do. There's definitely some more screenings going on throughout the weekend, both here and at the Walter Reed Theater that I would point out to you. Um, for those who might be interested tomorrow night here, we have the film No Land Song um, that you might have heard about. It was our Nestor Almendros Award winner about female singers in Iran. And we also have this weekend on Saturday on the matinee, The Dream of Shahrazad, which also looks at several different Middle Eastern countries and uprisings that occurred. So I definitely would point those two out in the brochure to you. The other thing I just want to quickly mention, obviously if you're here tonight, feel free to tweet, post to Instagram, etc. That's our handle and our hashtag. And the other thing I do want to be sure to mention tonight for all of you is we are taping this session. So just um, a note if you want to pose a question or otherwise, we are recording this. So I just want to be sure to mention that to everyone. Now then, for tonight, um, I have five guests who are going to be joining me on stage shortly. But the way the program's going to work, just so you have some sense of it, and then I'll give you a little bit of a description before I welcome Ginny and Lauren is that we have a selection of four shorts from the Trials of Spring. Um, we're going to show f the first two, which are on Bahrain and Syria, and then we'll break for a bit of a discussion. And then we have a second pair on Yemen and Libya, and that will be followed by discussion. We are going to discuss amongst the panel, and then we're going to open it up for a full Q&A with all of you for a good half hour. So I just ask for a little bit of patience while we're going through the initial discussion. Um, beyond that, um, <laughs> I just want to share a little bit about the framework for the discussion in that the idea behind putting this program together was very much to talk about the stories and the content you're going to see tonight and the subjects of the films, but also about the different tools and modalities with which the team from Trials of Spring worked on a feature, a set of shorts, a website, various partnerships and collaborations. So a lot of the discussion tonight is going to go back and forth between the content and sort of the artistic nature of the films as well as the strategic packaging and placement and sort of these more d deliberate choices we make when we're trying to get messages out, particularly with a project that has to do with the voices of women. So before I bring Ginny and Lauren up to share a little bit more with you, I just want to share one piece uh, from their website, which I think is such a great description. And I'm just going to read this quickly before I welcome them up. The Trials of Spring is a groundbreaking multimedia initiative that amplifies the voices of remarkable women who offer a beacon of hope for the region at a time when the head lines are bleak. In countless ways, women hold the key to a stable, peaceful, and prosperous Middle East. It is time to listen carefully to what they have to say. So please join me in welcoming executive producer Ginny Redeker and Lauren Feeney, digital director. Um, Thank everybody. I just want to thank everybody for coming, and I want to thank the Human Rights Watch Film Festival. It's been incredibly wonderful for us to be here this week. It's definitely the place that we wanted to premiere more than anything in the world. And um, this project, it's been an interesting genesis of it. We started out making a documentary film. We thought we were going to make a film about the triumphant women of the Arab Spring. And it quickly became very, very clear to us we, that we could not make one film to cover the entire region. And that we decided it was really important for us to have a really heavy digital presence. And Lauren Feeney, who I'd worked with before, came on board and, has, and I want her to introduce what we're going to see tonight. Um, so um, the feature film, which maybe some of you have had the chance to see, um, it takes place mostly in Egypt, and uh, Hen Nefea, who's the main character of that film, is here in the audience. Um, and these films 
feature other women activists who are really playing central leadership roles in the um, uprisings in their country, and almost all of them faced enormous backlash. Um, so they're not exactly the most uplifting stories necessarily, but there is certainly hope in them. Um, and it's been a wonderful experience getting to work on this project. And it's, I of course, thank Jenny so much for being so dedicated to having a strong web presence. Um, and it's been amazing, of course, working with MediaStorm and the New York Times and all, many of the other people who worked on the project who are out in the audience. So thank you. Thank so, you. Great. OK. Um, so move across the row here. Um, just directly to my left here is Anne Derry, who is the editorial director of Video Partnerships at the New York Times. I then have Samia Khan, Director of Partnership Development from Media Storm, Jenny Ritiker, Executive Producer, Lauren Feeney, Digital Director, and Beth Levison, Producer. So I think we can get into some of the details, but just I think perhaps a very basic question to start. Um, the two stories we just saw are very powerful. Um, I'm obsessed with both Not A Time on the YouTube channel and the imagery of the dresses, I, 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 they're so powerful. But I think, just to take a step back, the question of how did the team find the stories? The decision making behind which country, <laughs> troubleshooting, I mean, I, I don't, it's a huge question, but let's just start with that. Like, and we have two more stories coming, but maybe you can give us the framework. Um, yeah, we found them in all different ways, and um, of course, we, it, there were a number of stories that we had set our heart on that fell through because uh, the region is in so much turmoil. So, um, you know, actually what we found as we started researching what happened in all these countries is almost across the board, women really were the instigators of these uprisings. And so in Libya, there's the story of the mothers of the Abu Salim prison. Uh, the, there was a a group of men who had been executed um, by Gaddafi. They were they were in prison and executed, and no, their families weren't even told that they were dead for, I think, six years or something like that. And those, their mothers and wives, were really the people that had they, the first protest that became the Libyan Revolution was started by them. So they were one of the first stories that we really wanted to tell, and we were you know, minutes away from buying the plane ticket and uh, the airport was taken over by militias. So there were a number of false starts like that, but landing on all these stories, you know, actually um, the the brides of peace that you saw, um, the one of the brides, this woman, Rima Dali, is really the most well-known of the group and uh, she's in hiding, so I had ex exchanged some emails with her, but she couldn't speak to the media, but it was through a Human Rights Watch researcher that we found the other two, Kinda and Lubna, so thanks for that. Um, but, you know, we just, we have a, a huge network of organizations that we've been in touch with for a long time and just through talking to people, you hear the same names come up over and over again and then you realize, okay, this is the one that we should be talking about. Yeah. And I think maybe I'll just turn the question a little bit to bring it to Samia and Anne a little bit. And, and, and I'm not sure, maybe you could even tell us, I'm not sure at what point you two started to see the material. Um, but I think there's sort of a question for me in the background of once you guys saw the material and perhaps others in the team, did that start to help form, okay, these are really the stories that are gonna work best online, or these are the stories that are gonna work best in this format or at this length. I guess I'm just curious at some point, was the actual distribution and editing sort of a determining factor in which stories made it through um, the project? And I, I'll let Samia and I maybe start or tag team. I mean, I think, um, I think that when, um, oh, go ahead, it is, it is, uh, we, the stories had already been chosen, I mean, the six films that you saw had already been chosen as the six digital films, so I don't know if there was additional, I don't actually know if there was additional filming or there were, there were, you know, there were some, there were things you started that we didn't finish, right? Yeah, there were, there were a few stories yeah. that we, um, had started that didn't feel like they were going to be right. right, but I think the better answer to that question is maybe there was, um, the feature film was originally going to look at three countries, and um, so some of the research behind uh, the feature film, the, there was uh, a scout in Tunisia and Libya, and so the shorts, in some cases, built from that research from characters that were found in it. So I'm gonna bring it back to you, Anne. So once you did see them, 
I've been told, I have a little bit of information that I, I've been told that you, um, as much as you were going to be a partner in terms of distribution and a platform, there became more of an editorial involvement and engagement. If, if I hope I'm not overstating. Maybe you could explain a little bit because I think this is really valuable for people who are used to working in the traditional filmmaking media of feature length documentaries. But I think maybe there was a process there that you could share a little bit about. I think there was a process and it's actually, we have subsequent, well previous to that and subsequently have been working on more projects like this. And I think, you know, we, we because um, at the times, I've been doing video at the Times for 10 years, and what we really have done and what we've specialized in is short form documentary content. And we were all from long form documentary and kind of made the transition to short form. And so there's a way that you create, you make those short form. It's, I mean, it's obviously a lot of the same skill set and it's a lot of the same. Um, um, sensibilities, but it's definitely different to make a five to eight minute piece than it is to make, you know, an hour. And so I think we had a great collaboration with Lauren and her team because we were coming from that that background for, with a lot of experience in that area. And I think we had a great, it was, we did a lot of back and forth, a lot of discussion about, you know, you know, narrative arc and length and just what, what what you can leave in, what you can put out. And of course, everything was in the context of also, we also put all those um, videos inside articles on the Times website. So that was a whole other piece of it that came a little bit later. But but yeah, we had, a, it was a really, it was a great collaboration. And if I can add, I mean, uh, very early on when we were talking about the shorts, we really did want to get a, a really terrific digital partner because we knew that people weren't going to come to our website necessarily, they weren't going to find our material, but if we could get our shorts out into the world, then we would find audiences where they where they were or where they are. And I think originally, I think that we were thinking about it more as a distribution partnership, but what I, I found really enriching about the process was, was how much the Times, how much you guys brought to it editorially, that they became both storytelling and distribution partners. And I think from, it, it, be, it, it, uh, it concretized the partnership and it made it it made it better than it, and if than if we had just sort of delivered shorts and they were distributed. So I think that it was really additive to have that melding of minds, both from a distribution perspective and from an editorial one. I have two questions. I want to go in two different directions. So let me I, I want to come back to Samia for a minute because hearing the New York Times narrative kind of brings me back to the thought. So how did you all conceive or conceptualize your own website? What were you thinking of these are the primary purposes of this website? And I just want to hear a little bit about that and the material and how sure. that was integrated. Sure. So at Media Storm, we're a storytelling company. So everything that we look at, we think of, you know, how is this going to tell a great story? So while we wanted to build a beautiful website so that it could be a holding place for people to come to and for the stories, what we really wanted to focus on was the packaging of the short stories within the Media Storm player and Embeddable player and how to really allow people to see that there was this larger context. There weren't just the individual stories, but that, you know, the whole reason that we were the Trials of Spring was doing short stories from around the region was to show how diverse the story of women were and how important where they were across. So for us, what was really important was having this player that contained and, and had sophisticated packaging around those stories that could then be embed across the web because we know that the idea of you know, a destination site is dated. You need to get your content to where people are already going. So that was our thinking around, you know, how we were really going to package the films. And then the last question I kind of want to pose in this break before we go to the other films, and I think this will bring everybody back in, but I'm going to start maybe with Anne again and the, uh, everyone can jump in. I, I guess going back to the content of the stories, because for me, these two films in particular, and I think we'll see elements of this in the second two films, they're, the form of activism especially with the brides, is so gender specific and, and the symbolism they chose and there are some cultural elements in both stories. And the question I want to pose is when you saw this material, I, I'm kind of curious from the New York Times perspective and this may be a broader thing we see with media, are you able to get these stories yourself? Like I'm wondering if when you saw the material it represented a point of view, a perspective material that wasn't coming in through other outlets, contributors. I'm just sort of curious, like I feel like this material is very unique and what was the value there maybe? I think the value, well that is the value. I mean, we could go out and get those stories, but I think that what's nice about it and it's what 
partnerships offer us is it doesn't mean we are going to get them. So what's really was exciting about this project is we all went, oh, this, I mean, we covered, extensively covered the Arab Spring. I mean, you know, and, and so, but we didn't, and we covered those stories in, some of those stories in our reporting at the time, but we don't often also look back, right? The time, we're always going forward because we're, you know, a news organization, and we hadn't looked at that slice. So a lot of my job is when people bring us projects around and go out and look for projects, it's like this could have been something we could have done or should have done it, but we didn't. And so it was a hu it's so valuable to us to have that sensibility because, you know, as many people as we have reporting stories all over the world in video and print, this, this didn't come. So it, it's just a, it's an enormous opportunity. And it totally worked with all the reporting that we had done over the past four or five years. And I just want to kick it back to the team, Lauren, Beth, and Ginny. Did you, have you all had similar reactions in dealing with other partners or collaborators? Just sort of when they see the material, it fits into some framework that they weren't able to find, achieve. I'm just curious if you want to mention anybody else that you've kind of engaged with. Well, I was, I mean, Lauren can tell the story better than I, but we were actually in a meeting with the New York Times. It was our first initial meeting when we were talking about the partnership. And we were sending somebody off to Bahrain, who's actually here, um, who was going to be Miriam Dweeter, who is the, going to go in and produce the piece in Bahrain. The New York Times couldn't get into Bahrain right. at that time That's because right. the journalists, they, they can't go in without insurance, without everything. We had smuggled a camera in. But we couldn't either. Right. Well, it, turned that, out. It, it turned out that we couldn't either, but well, we thought we could. We thought you could. Right. So, th so, but we did, we were able to do that yes. story. So maybe, Lauren, yes. you could talk about how that happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the best laid plans, we, we um, it's incredibly hard to get into Bahrain as a journalist. It's, um, they have one of the r worst records in the world, and I believe the Times hadn't had somebody there in four years since yeah, we got thrown Nick Kristoff had been yep. thrown out. <laughs> um, so we were like, we're sending Miriam, and she, we, she was going to go basically at, uh, to meet up with another young woman who was from Bahrain who had been studying in the U.S., and we thought it would just look like an innocent friendship. Um, and they saw her as a national security threat and <laughs> sent her back home. So the story that we ended up doing, um, the character that you saw, uh, Dr. Dyfe, she was invited to a conference in Prague, and so um, we sent a, a Czech DP to interview her. I, I Skyped in and, and spoke to her. Um, and then a friend of Dr. Dyfe's who was not really a professional camera person, but had a 5D. Um, you know, we, we gave her a detailed list of what we were looking for, and she spent a few days uh, filming with her. And um, throughout all of the other pieces, we had this very rigorous process for sending footage back so that it wouldn't be um, stopped by people who were digging through the mail. Um, and we would always send things by hand, and there was nobody that was willing to carry this footage out of Bahrain. We, we talked to so many people, and everybody was afraid to carry it. So they stuck it in a FedEx package, and two days later, it was at my door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't it not arrive the first time? Didn't, it didn't. What was the one that got lost? Remember that? It got lost in the office. Oh. <laughs> right. Best laid plans, and then it got lost in the office. Um, okay. I, I, did anyone else want to add to that? Because I think I was going to break and let us move on to the next couple of films. But um, and we definitely have more in this vein. But thank you all. We're going to take a break and go to the next two films, and then come right back. Thank you. Oh. Thank you.